Good morning, and happy Easter. Um, I hope and pray that you're having a blessed day, uh, and that this Sunday is especially uh, a wonderful Sunday uh, for you and your family. Um, I wish you were here in the pews, but uh, also uh, I know that it's important that you stay at home and uh, stay safe. So I just pray that all of you and all of your family are healthy and safe. This morning, um, I'd like to start off with the Apostles' Creed. Uh, the last, last week we started with uh, the, the, the Lord's Prayer, but this week I think it's, it's special. So I want to go ahead and start off with the Apostles' Creed. And if you know it, uh, join me uh, as I pray. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I want to remind you today um, that after the message, uh, we'll be, I'll be sharing Holy Communion with you. Uh, I guess I'm going to call it virtual communion uh, because we don't have anybody here uh, in the pews. But uh, I would remind you that we have the liturgy for that uh, on the website. There's a link to it. And on our Facebook page, there's also uh, a link to it. And if you receive our uh, prayer list, uh, it's also on that. So there's several ways that uh, that you can find that liturgy, and I would invite you to join in with us. Uh, <clears throat> As I was praying about this message uh, this week, the thought occurred to me, you know, uh, this is a special Sunday. It's Easter Sunday. But what does Easter mean? You know, I've never actually looked in the dictionary and looked up the actual def definition. And I was pleasantly uh, surprised when I looked it up. And I'll share it with you now. Easter is the most important and oldest festival of the Christian church celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. The most important Sunday of the year. The most important celebration in the Christian church. Why? It's because it's the Sunday that we celebrate the day that our Lord and Savior conquered sin and death for all of us. What an amazing gift. We celebrate the day that Jesus Christ arose from the grave. So today I titled the sermon, The Lord is Risen. And our scripture comes from the Gospel of John, uh, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 18. That's John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. And as always, I would invite you uh, to listen with your heart, to listen with your mind, every time you hear the word proclaimed. Uh, whenever you hear the word uh, said aloud, uh, it has power. It has power to change our hearts. Uh, it has the power to change our minds. Um, it has the power to transform us uh, and to become closer to God. So don't let anything distract that from happening. So hear what the word has to say, what John tells us. Early on the first day of the week, 
While it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter, and he reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. But they still didn't understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you put him, and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And then she turned toward him, and she cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And you know... We read these words, and sometimes it's kind of hard to imagine what was going on during those three days. Um, and sometimes it's just kind of surreal, kind of hard to believe. But I would invite you to, if you haven't seen The Passion of Christ, the movie, I would invite you to see that because it really gives you a detailed uh, experience. My family and I watched it last night, and just uh, as I sat there, as I saw the tears, as I saw the pain, um, it gave me a better understanding of just uh, how brutal, but how important everything was uh, that happened to Jesus that weekend. Uh, the disciples' pain had to have been excruciating. I mean, you think about it. They've been with Jesus for three years. Uh, they heard him talk. They heard him uh, speak words that were wise and that meant something. They heard him uh, speak the truth, speak God's wisdom. They'd seen him love people that nobody, ever, nobody else did. They'd seen his love in person. They felt his love. They'd experienced his grace. And now it seemed like everything was gone. And they didn't know what to do. Jesus even tried to prepare them for it. I mean, he told them several times. Uh, he explained it to them exactly what was going to happen. 
before it happened at least three times. In Matthew chapter 20, uh, verses 18 and 19, Jesus told them, He said, The Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will turn him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. And then on the third day, he will be raised to life. And then just before he was betrayed, in uh, John chapter 16, verse 20, he said to them, he said, very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve but your grief will turn to joy. And then in verse 22, he said, Now is your time of pain, but I will see you again, and no one will take away your joy. And just like he said, it happened. On the morning of the third day, everything changed. Just as he said it would. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb that morning. Uh, and when she got there, the Lord's body wasn't there. I can't imagine how she must have felt. But immediately, she turned around and she ran back to tell the disciples. And when she told them, they couldn't believe what they heard. So they did the same thing. Immediately, they ran to the tomb to find out for themselves to make sure what was going on. And when they got there, Jesus' body wasn't there. But the tomb wasn't empty. There were strips of linen and a burial cloth laying there where Jesus' body had been. The linens that had been wrapped around his body and the cloth that had been wrapped around his head were still in the tomb. Now that's significant. It's significant for two reasons. First of all, grave robbers were common in those days. I mean, they would break into tombs and steal the bodies. Evidently there was some value uh, to the linens and things that uh, were on the body. But if a grave robber had gone into the tomb and taken his body, why would they have taken the time to, to unwrap it? Why would they have taken the time to, to take the cloth and neatly fold it up and lay it on his bed? Doesn't make sense. And then there's the linen and the cloth themselves. They were neatly folded up. It says the burial cloth that was wrapped around his head was folded up neatly and set aside separate from the linens. To me, that symbolizes that the Lord's job was done. That he had completed the mission to open the gate to eternal life that his father had given him. The job was done. But as John said, the disciples didn't understand what was going on. They probably remembered some of what Jesus had said to them about all that was going to transpire, but they still didn't completely understand. So, the Lord did something else special for them and, and for us. Uh, then he appeared to them in person. Um, and he appeared to them many times over the next 40 days. He appeared to them so that they wouldn't doubt and so that you and I wouldn't doubt. Now, he appeared to Mary first. Uh, and she didn't understand that it was Jesus. 
She didn't understand who was standing there. Her pain and her suffering was so excruciating that she hadn't recognized him until he called her by name. And then not only did he appear to Mary, but he, he appeared to the disciples uh, over and over. Uh, he appeared to two of the disciples on the road to Emmaus that day. He walked along with them, and he heard them talking about their pain and grief about what had happened to him. They invited him into their home. He had a meal with them. And it wasn't until he broke the bread that he opened their eyes and they realized who he was. And he also appeared to the, to the twelve, uh, to the other disciples. He appeared to them twice behind closed doors, behind locked doors. And the first time, Thomas wasn't there. And when he came back and they told him what had happened, that the Lord had appeared to them and that he truly had risen from the grave, he couldn't believe it. He told him he had to see it for himself. So, once again, the Lord appeared to them behind closed doors. And he told Thomas, It is I. Put your hands in, my hand, in the holes in my hands. Touch my side. And then, he didn't even have to touch it. He knew who it was. He believed. And not only did he appear to them then, but he also appeared to them on the shore of the lake. Uh, they were out fishing. Uh, they'd been out fishing all night. It was early morning. Um, they hadn't caught anything. He spoke to them and he said, Friends, have you caught anything? And they said, No. So he told them to throw the net over on the right side of the boat and you'll catch some. And they caught the biggest catch that they ever caught. And then they realized who was on the shore. They came ashore, and they actually ate breakfast with him. He had some fish cooking uh, on a fire. And he restored Peter, because Peter had denied him three times. Also, not only did he appear to just to them, but he also appeared to Saul on the road to Damascus. And if you remember, Saul is the one who was killing Christians, persecuting Christians. In fact, he was on his way to Damascus uh, to persecute even more, and he stopped him in his tracks and let him know who he was. And he became Paul, the one who wrote so many wise words that we have today uh, about the Lord and his love. All in all, during those 40 days, Jesus appeared to over 500 believers. <laughs> wow. Why? So that you and I wouldn't doubt. So that there would be no doubt that just as he said, he would raise, be raised from the dead and pay the road for us to eternal life. Jesus conquered the power of sin and death for us, just as he said he would. And he did it to fulfill God's will. In John chapter 6, verse 40, I leave you with this. Jesus said these words. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Thanks be to God. So I say to you today, the Lord is risen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I said, today is very...
very special day. Uh, it's a day when we remember all that the Lord has done for us. And uh, I would like to share with, uh, Holy Communion with you now. Um, if you don't have the liturgy, um, please follow along. And uh, I hope and pray that, that this blesses you uh, in a special way. Um, so let us begin. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now I'll turn over to the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night that the Lord gave his life for ours, during the Last Supper in the upper room, he did something very special for us. Uh, he took the bread from the table. He got up from the table. He gave the Father thanks for the bread, and then he blessed it. And then he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat from this, all of you, for this represents my body, which is broken for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do this, remember me. And when the supper was over, again the Lord arose from the table. He took the cup. And he gave the Father thanks for the cup, and he blessed the cup. And then he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and drink from this, all of you. For this represents the blood of the new covenant, my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do this, remember me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. 
as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. And thank you, Lord, for your word. So, I hope and pray that you've been blessed by this service today. I hope and pray that the Lord blesses you and your family and keeps you safe uh, during these unusual times. And I look forward to the day that, that we're able to get back together. Um, if you feel led to, to send in an offering to the church or send in your tithe, there's a couple ways that uh, you can do that. Uh, our mailing address is P.O. Box 583, Merkson, Texas, and the zip code is 76941. Or you can put it in an envelope and drop it by the office. Um, or if you come in and the office door is closed, you can uh, put it in the secretary's box. Um, those are a couple of ways that you can give an offering. Also, if you have any prayer requests, uh, we'd like to pray for you. Uh, we do have a prayer team, and uh, you can send those uh, prayer requests. You can email them to prayer at fumcmerkson.org. That's prayer at fumcmerkson.org. Or you can email them to me personally, and that's pastor at fumcmerkson.org. So today, um, as I have been the past weeks, I'd like to leave you with one more scripture. And it's a, it's a promise that Jesus gave to the disciples, but it's also a promise that Jesus gives to all of us. And it comes from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. And it's the first through the third verse. So hear what Jesus has to say to us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. So I say it to you again. He is risen. Praise the Lord. And now we'll close with our dismissal prayer uh, that we close with each week. Uh, I hope that you have that. Uh, we put it out um, on the Facebook page and also uh, through our, our prayer uh, email. So we'll join together now. Oh God, 
by the grace of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, revive and encourage me to be the servant leader you are calling me to be. Empower me to proclaim the good news of Jesus' life-changing love. Break through to renew and revive our churches. Do what we ourselves cannot do. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Easter. Have a blessed week. And we'll see you again next Sunday.